sistemlerin ahir ve akıbetleri ayrı olan. Ağır esbalcı tahret devran durası ve sahip eden efendilerimizin ve sahibi diğer insanlar usulü Mihan Hazirat Nervar Şerif'lerine yirmi izbile Allah'a ve şuradaki Allah'ın efendilerimizin şehidimiz sahibi Hüseyin Şah Türkleri ve Sokrasen Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve halen husus bu caminin valisi ve bu güne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mevzin kaymalarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahı için Allah rızası için en Fatiha Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmedu Allah Teala, ve nestafir ve şerhu an la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve şerhu anna seyyidina Muhammedin abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve azvacihi. Ve sahibi tabi khulafa rahşidin mahadim min ba'di. Ve zemmati ala tahkik. Khususan min fa'lamati khulafa resul ala tahkik. Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakr ve Osman ve Ali. ولا بك صابت تابين رضوان الله تعالى عليه وجمعين يا أيها المؤمن الحاضرون ذك الله تعالى فإن الله من الذين ذك والذين هم محسنون الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على شرف الأمجاد المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم If you were to count the favors of Allah you would not be able to number them Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. And Allah knows what you keep hidden and what you declare. Those that they pray to other than Allah create nothing and are themselves created. They are dead, lifeless, and they do not know when they will be raised. Your Allah is one Allah. But as for those who do not believe in the Ahirat, their hearts refuse to know and they are arrogant. Definitely Allah knows what they hide and what they declare. Indeed, He does not love the arrogant. Sadaqallah Allah May peace and blessings be upon our Master Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, who has said, When someone makes salawat for me according to what is my right, Allah Azza creates from that word an angel with one wing in the east and one wing in the west with his feet resting in the lowest of the earth and his neck bowed under the arsh. Allah Azza says to that angel, bless my servant as he blessed my prophet. And the angel will continue to bless that person until the day of judgment. May peace and blessings be upon him and his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the Fakhul Afer Rashidin Hazrat al Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar al-Farooq, Hazrat Osman al-Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. O oh, believers, we should never forget that this life, it is short, that Azrael is waiting for us, the angel of death is waiting for us, that our grave is in front of us, and that a day when we will have to stand before our Lord, 
and give accounting is destined for us. After we take our last breath of life, our book of deeds will be closed and we will be judged based on how we lived in this life. Those who pass, those who pass will wish that they could come back to this life. As our Shaykh Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibir Siyar Rabbani Kadasan Sir, is saying, Azrael is coming to you. The angel of death is coming to you and to me. No one is escaping from that. The ones who passed are wishing and hoping that they will be here. The good ones and the bad ones. The bad ones are hoping, they are saying, I wish that I was above the ground. They say, what were you going to do? You lived all that life. What did you do? What were you going to do? They say, I wish that one more life is given to me, one more breath of life is given to me, that I will say this shahadat and I will go out from this world with this shahadat. The one who is disobedient, who has faith, but is disobedient to Allah and His Prophet, is wishing that he was in this world, cursing himself and saying, I was disobedient at daytime. How foolish! How foolish I was that I was disobedient at night time too. At least I would have had half and half days. You are running away from the snakes now, yes. You are running away from those animals that are under the ground, yes. You cannot run there. They will catch you. Good. So then you will say, these snakes will be a little bit less in my grave. The believers are also sorry and they are sad. When they are laying down in their place and they are watching their paradises and they are seeing higher paradises, they are asking, saying, who does this belong to? How come I didn't reach there? And the angels will say to him, you were busy with so much Malayani. You spent your time, your breath of life with nonsense. You just got this paradise. If you were more busy with Allah, made more zikr, gave more salawats to the Holy Prophet wasalam, you will be reaching to these higher stations. So they will be sorry too. Except the righteous people, the salihin and the friends of Allah, the awliya Allah. O oh believers, this is the reality of what is going to happen to us after Azrael comes to us. A person can collect all the knowledge. He can gain all the wealth. He can gain all the worldly power. But in the end, he is going to be in his grave. And he is going to be asking these same questions. Those who came before us, they were constantly thinking about this reality and worrying about this reality. The Sahabi Kiram, even the ones who were promised paradise when they were living, they were worried about this reality. Hazrat Osman al Ghani, radiallahu an. One time, he was standing at a grave and he started to cry until his beard was dripping with tears. Somebody said to him, the mention of paradise and hell don't make you cry like this. Why is the grave making you cry? And Hazrat Osman replied, I heard Rasulullah say, verily the grave the grave is the first home of the Ahirat. If someone is saved in their grave, everything that follows is easy. If someone is not saved, then what follows is even harder. I also heard Holy Prophet say, I have never seen a sight more horrifying than the grave. These ones were not doing anything wrong. They were doing everything right. Every morsel of food that they placed in their mouth came from halal. They spent their whole nights praying and they spent their days running and sacrificing in the way of Allah. But still they were worrying about their death and they were worried about their ahirat. Hazrat ibn Umar radiallahu an, one of the most knowledgeable companions, he used to cry so much that he became blind. And when they asked him about his crying, he said, You are amazed at my crying. Even the sun and the moon cry from the fear of Allah. 
They were not thinking like billions of today's Muslims are thinking. Oh, we are saved. We pray five times a day. We go to Hajj every year. We are saved. They were not thinking, these ones who were around the Holy Prophet والسلام, that they were safe. They did not say, we're going to get Shafat, we can do whatever we want. Like so many people in tariqats are saying, doing all sorts of crooked things, and then saying, I'm going to get intercession of the Prophet. No. They were constantly running to do more and more hizmat in the way of Allah and His Prophet. And more and more they were sacrificing themselves. And more and more they were seeing the reality of this world and their love for this world becomes less and less and turns more and more into hate. And they start to see the reality of the Ahirat and death. And more and more they fall in love with it. And they're running to be in that world. They were worried about keeping and protecting their faith until the last breath. They were worried about keeping their promise. Once somebody saw Hazrat Abu Darda radiallahu an, he was making sajda, and he was saying the shahadat over and over again, begging Allah to be saved. To be saved from what? From hypocrisy. The person said, may Allah forgive you. Ya Abu Darda, what is it with you and hypocrisy? And as everyone knows, Hazrat Abu Darda was one of the highest Sahabis. He was one of those that the Holy Prophet والسلام, loved so much. He was one of those that is part of the Ahli Sufa. He was one of those that put himself out from everything that is happening in this world, just staying and worshipping his Lord. So this man asked, may Allah forgive you, Ya Abu Darda. What is it with you and hypocrisy? And Hazrat Ya Abu Darda radiallahu anh, replied saying, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi forgive me. Who is safe from a test? Who is safe from a test? Who is safe from a test? Wallahi, a man might get tested for just an hour and he turns away from his religion. And here was a man that he was pulling himself out from everything that reminds me, reminds him of the dunya and of desires. Those were the Sahabi Kiram living in the best of times. Today's 21st century Muslims sunk in the dunya and sunk in the desires and to even sit and understand if you have hypocrisy in your heart to run to get rid of shaitanic characteristics they are saying this is unnecessary why are you making this religion to be difficult what about us Living in this worst of times. What about us who are living in a time that the Holy Prophet ﷺ described saying, run towards good deeds. There will be confusion, fitna, which will be like pieces of a dark night during which a man wakes up as a believer and becomes a disbeliever at night time. Or he begins the night as a believer and wakes up as a disbeliever and a man would sell his religion for a portion of this worldly life. This is the reality of our time. And yet we see that nobody is afraid of hypocrisy. Nobody is afraid of losing their faith. Imams are not concentrating on it. Scholars are not concentrating on it. Sheikhs, they are not concentrating on it. The Muslims of today act like faith is an inheritance that they have a right to, that belongs to them, that will never go away. Nobody sits down to make tafakkur to ask themselves sincerely, am I a believer or a hypocrite? Nobody looks at their lifestyle to say, am I living in a way that is pleasing to Allah and His Prophet? I'm saying the shahadat, I'm doing what Islam is saying I should be doing, but is my lifestyle pleasing to Allah and pleasing to His Prophet? 
Nobody is worrying, saying, maybe Allah has written me in the book of hypocrites. The fear of hypocrisy is a sign of real Iman. And feeling safe from hypocrisy is a sign of being a munafiq. This is why Hazrat Hassan al-Basri said, nobody except a believer fears being a hypocrite. And nobody except a hypocrite feels safe from hypocrisy. Real believers are worried about their faith. They are checking their faith constantly. They are checking their faith daily. They are checking their faith when they are doing an action to see whether this action is pleasing to Allah or not. They are checking their faith when they speak. They look at what they speak. Is this pleasing to Allah or not? They are checking their intentions. They are watching themselves. Whether they are sitting or they are standing, they're lying down, they're remembering their Allah, and they're making tafakkur. Because they are worried. They're looking at the conditions of this world. Especially in this world of the Ahir Zaman. This world that we have no Halifa. This world where the Shariat is not ruling. This world where tyranny is ruling. And they are the authority and everyone is running to become tyrants. They're looking at everything that is happening. And they're looking at the tyranny that we've committed to the believers and the unbelievers. Tyranny that we've committed to nature and to ourselves. The tyranny that we've created, that we've made. That we've committed to knowledge and to everything that has been slowly built up for thousands of years. And they are worried. They are worried that it is going to touch their faith. Hazrat Umar al-Faruq radiallahu anh said, You think that you are believers. Yet there are believers amongst you who are starving. He's saying, you think you are believers, but there are believers that are starving. So how can you think that you're a believer? Our Shaykh Sahib Sahib, Shaykh Abdul Karim Kibri Siyar Abbani was speaking about this zulm, this oppression, saying, today another 500 children died in Somalia. This was said a few years ago. With white skin, white eyes, black skin, their eyes are looking, their skin is dark. They cannot move from hunger and they die. They are not dying. They are looking with their eyes open. Their eyes, their white eyes are open, looking to the world, speaking to you, saying, I am not dying, but you are dead. You are all living dead. You are coming to this country sucking every richness and you are not giving me my share to eat. You are dead, O oh, capitalist ones, O oh, white men, O oh, Americans, O oh, Europeans, O oh, Middle Eastern ones, O oh, Russians. That's what they are looking and crying for you. You are dead. They are passing to a clean life. They are passing to an everlasting life. But we are dead because we have problems. Because we have nothing to think except our problems. Yes, you have problems. Day and night, making problems to your own selves and even forgetting how to cry. You don't know how to cry. How are you going to understand? At least if you cannot do anything, cry. But no, you lost everything. Feelings are gone, dead, living dead. That's what those children are saying, looking. Their eyes are looking, they're white becomes more white. I'm looking and I'm seeing. This is what they are saying to us. You are all dead. We are living, but you are all dead. That's because you are not feeling anything anymore. You're not seeing anything anymore. You're not understanding anything anymore because you have died worrying for your selfish, egoistic lifestyle. Yes, that's what's happening. And yes, we should move. Wake up. Because Allah's revenge is coming. It's coming to every one of us. I don't know who is going to escape from that. But the revenge is coming. Holy Prophet is saying, if a believer lives on the other side of the world and the thorn enters to the finger of that believer, other believers who are on the other side of the world has to feel that pain. Is that what's happening to you? Is that what's happening to us? No. Do you have that? 
Those children, they are looking and they are dying. Yes. We are going to die. But it is a test from Allah Jalla Wala to 21st century people. Do we want to check if we are hypocrites or believers? This is a test for us. Is our heart moving because of the zoom that is happening in this world? Is our heart moving when we see what is happening in Africa, in Uyghuristan, in Burma, in Kashmir, in Palestine, in every part of the world? Is our heart moving or is it dead? So many of those who have Muslim names, their hearts are dead. So many of those Muslim leaders, they're accepting money, dripping with the blood of their brothers to remain silent. The one who supports a tyrant is a tyrant himself. As Sahib al Sayyid is saying, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Understand the activities of this world. What's happening and why it's happening. Why is it happening? Question. Question by yourself to understand. Then slowly you will understand that whom you are supporting, they are the cruel ones. Why are you helping them? And if you're helping the cruel ones, supporting the cruel ones and the tyrant ones, then you are a tyrant one too. You must wake up. We must wake up before it's too late for our own selves. We must wake up before it's too late for everything else that's around us. But believers are too busy thinking about their next meal. Not like those ones who are suffering in the countries that zulm is inflicted on them. Believers, Muslims are worried about their next meal, thinking what kind of good things I'm going to have. They are worried about their clothes, they are worried about their cars, they are worried about their houses, they are worried about how much more of this dunya that they are going to collect. They are worried about the problems that they cause to themselves. Their hearts only move when there is entertainment. Their hearts only move when there is fun. Hearts have become dead. Just like a tyrant. We must run away from tyranny and run away from becoming a tyrant. Following the ego will make you into a tyrant. The only ones who can teach you the tyranny of your ego, they are the friends of Allah. If you are separated from them, if you reject them, if you disobey them, you are going to be a tyrant. As Hazrat Bayazid al Bistami is saying, the one who has no shaykh, his shaykh is shaitan. We are thanking our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has blessed us with the sohbet of our shaykh in these darkest times. We are asking to be clean from tyranny, to have alive hearts and to be counted as believers. We are asking with the dua of Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Al-Haqqani Qadas Al-Sir saying, O our Lord, lakal hamd, all praise to you. O our Lord, send us your lions. Ya Rabbi, send us Shahi Mardan. May our faces be bright. May our hearts be pure. May we be together with clean face ones at your court. May we come together and join under the banner of your Habib wassalam. O nation of Muhammad wassalam, make an effort for this. Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq. Amin. Astaghfirullah. 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 لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد كلش كبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد كلش كبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك والحمد كلش كبير لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين سبحان كدوسنا ربنا رب الملائكة تور سبحان كدوسنا ربنا رب الملائكة تور سبحان كدوسنا ربنا رب الملائكة إن دين عند الله الإسلام قام صلاة صلى الله